Okay, today we're going to replace a diaphragm um, on a Fostex horn. Very, very common model. Uh, this one's actually a Fostex FT300H, as you can see here. Um, you'll find that the Foster um, drivers are identical, uh, Foster or Fostex. Uh, same type of thing. This is a very common horn configuration. You'll see these on 4 inch by 10 inch horn lenses as well uh, and some other popular sizes which are uh, out uh, in the industry. On this particular model we're going to replace the diaphragm. It has been damaged. Um, this particular model here uh, uses our D420 uh, replacement diaphragm. So the first thing we want to do is remove the four screws here one, two, three, and four using either a 7 millimeter wrench or a 9 30 seconds inch uh, wrench to do that. So we'll remove the first or the four screws here. I like to loosen them kind of one by one, go around like this until they're able to be removed uh, by hand. Okay, at this point, you can usually get in there and just kind of twist these out. <coughs> is one of the easier diaphragms to install. Remove these four screws. You can see here. Set these screws aside for reuse later. There's the other two on the back side here. And then the last one here. A couple of turns here with the wrench. And that removes easily, as you can see here. Okay, so set those aside. The lens assembly will simply remove uh, from the magnet and diaphragm assembly here. You'll notice there's a phase plug in the middle of these that uh, comes out like this. Okay. Um, that'll be reused later. Lens assembly obviously reused, so we'll set that aside here. <coughs> and then you'll notice on the diaphragm assembly here, we have a single Phillips head screw that holds the uh, diaphragm assembly in place and five centering pins around the outside uh, to center the diaphragm. So this is really a very easy installation. So we'll take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the single screw here like this. Set that aside, and the old diaphragm just simply lifts out of place like this. You'll see in this particular case we have uh, what appears to be some broken windings on the voice coil. That's very normal on these. It's a rather delicate part, and sometimes they just go bad uh, you know, over time or from overpowering. Of course, that can happen as well. So nothing to be saved on this. This is discarded, and we're done with that. Take the new diaphragm out. of the packaging and you'll see it's the same exact uh, setup as the original uh, part here and so the first thing we'll do is clean our magnet gap we always do that on uh, the diaphragm replacements piece of masking tape sticky side out on a business card like this and run that through the magnet gap a couple of times to make sure that any dirt or debris that is collected in the magnet gap is being removed and you'll see that we did pick up a little bit of uh, debris right there uh, on the tape and that's normal and that's expected so you want to make sure you do that so that you have a clean environment for the new diaphragm to operate take a look at the new diaphragm make sure that everything looks good it's round everything looks like it's in good shape and you'll see here we have the four screws uh, mounts for the lens and one screw uh, that holds the diaphragm in here so it really only fits in one way so we basically just come in place, snap this down within the five pins, just like that. And you'll see once that's done that really the only thing left to do is install the, the mounting screw for the diaphragm and you're good to go. So we'll put the screw back in place like this. Just tighten it until it's snug, give it about a quarter turn and you're good there. So that's what you want, looking just like that. <coughs> the next thing to note on the face plug is that there's a couple of notches here to allow for <coughs> the lead-in connections uh, on the diaphragm plate here so make sure that you line up the center uh, nodule just like that so that the 
open notch areas or where the lead wires run in underneath the diaphragm to prevent any, prevent any shorting out uh, of the diaphragm assembly. And that just basically sits in place like that. And the lens, because it is notched here, only goes back in one direction like this. So it sets down in place just like that. Very easy. Four screws. Back through the top plate here. Do these one at a time. Usually just tighten these in by hand until, until they kind of stop turning on you. And then we'll finish up uh, with the wrench to make sure that everything is secure. Then we'll do a final test and then this horn will be repaired and ready to go. So we'll tighten these in. Usually give it about a half turn, one at a time, all the way around like this until they start to snug. You can feel them starting to tighten up a little bit there. That's what you want. Just like this here. And we'll just kind of go around, turn the assembly, a couple turns on each screw this way, and like that. And you'll feel them start to snug up. At that point, you just want to give them about a quarter turn, just like that. And that's it. Don't over tighten them. You don't want to crack the plastic plate of the uh, lens assembly here. And this particular unit is ready to go. You'll notice that it already has a red marking on it for the positive connection, which matches uh, on the bottom here. We have a plus and a minus marked on the sticker. Sometimes you'll see these Foster units um, or the Fostex units without any sticker or indication on the back. That's okay. Uh, the positive side is already marked for you. So you're good to go there for your reinstallation into the cabinet. <coughs> this particular uh, model driver you may see listed as an H025 or an H025N27 or N30. Uh, those are the very common models that you'll see on these. They all require the same diaphragm. Very straightforward to repair and replace that part. Last thing we'll do is we have our signal generator connections here. We'll connect here uh, with a setting on our audio generator at 2000 Hertz at about one to two volts. Uh, we don't want to put too much power to these uh, for testing just to make sure that they work and everything sounds clean. If you don't have a signal generator you can also use uh, just a low level music signal from your amplifier. Uh, very low level just to make sure that everything's working. So we'll clip that in place like that. You can hear the generator working. We sweep the frequencies through to make sure that everything is clean. And in this case, it is, so we are good to go. This particular unit came out of a community cabinet, so we'll go ahead and reinstall this uh, into the community uh, system that it was removed from, and uh, we're ready to go on that repair. That takes care of uh, the Fostex Foster D420 diaphragm replacement. Very straightforward.